Hi, everybody. I'm Jeff Morgenthaler. I'm here with Roy Hiesman. Hey, it's great to be back with you guys talking about an exciting new product that we've developed here at Equipment Zone, and that is the new Easy Ultimate Platen designed specifically for printing with hoodies or shirts that have a zipper. We have this cool new design where this piece can either be inserted if you're not using a zipper or easily taken out if you are. It's made from aluminum, the whole thing die cast so that it's super sturdy, won't warp, perfectly flat. Roy's gonna be showing us today how to use this to print on a hoodie. Anything to add about this before we move on? Yeah, actually, uh, compared to some of the other items out there on the market, it sits lower than anything else out there for doing hoodies. So you can probably start out typically where you're running with t-shirts right now when you take the t-shirt platen off and put this on. Perfect. So I uh, just wanted to point out that this also uses a frame with some rubber pieces there to help hold your, your hoodie or your shirt taut and also using the pin system so it is easily plugs into your printer just like all the other platens. So we're just gonna put this on. Super easy, I'm gonna turn the time over to Roy. I'll be monitoring questions, try to put those into the chat or the Q&A and I'll be checking those and asking Roy as we go along. Roy? All right, thank you so much. Appreciate it, thank you for attending today. Um, Again, as Jeff mentioned about this platen being for uh, sweatshirts, hoodies, uh, what have you, it all could be, also could be used for doing anything with buttons, okay? Um, can you move that to the right? Out of the video, sorry. So basically, I'm gonna go through the process with you. Uh, obviously, hoodies are going to probably have um, sorry about that. Hoodies are going to have some lint, so we definitely want to address that with a lint roller, get all that off prior to pre-treating, and trying to find, if you have a speed treater, uh, the optimal pre-treat, okay? We want to make sure that we have enough, depending on what sweatshirt that we're purchasing, uh, that is key. So different brands are going to require different amounts of pre-treat, whether it be a, a slight blend on the surface or a full 100% cotton face or uh, ones that are all together 100% cotton. So if you could keep that in mind when you're doing your testing, what I would suggest is to do segments on here as far as uh, how far you're going to go forward on this, okay? So I would do a, like a five inch segment at a certain, um, on the dial, let's say we could start out because hoodies are thicker at like uh, six. So I'm gonna do a five inch section at six uh, and then go from there, go another five inch section at six and a half, another five inch section at seven. So typically, or you may even start at five and a half, depending on the hoodie. So if you're finding that when you do a stripe at a certain number and it's really saturated and it's um, wet and milky looking, then that means you probably put too much pre-treat on there. You definitely want it to be wet looking, but not completely white, okay? So typically I have gone through these hoodies. The other thing you wanna do is you wanna take a tape measure and set where your platen's going to, I mean, your, uh, your start and finish is gonna be. So uh, from the start point to the pocket, I got 14 inches. And if I'm gonna get close to the pocket, I wanna allow for that travel time. So I'm gonna set my uh, position over here, right about, uh, I have it at 14 and a half to allow for a little bit of space, just in case. And I can go ahead and proceed with uh, pre-treating this one. I got it at six and a quarter on this specific garment. Okay, so this is appearing to be the right amount uh, of pre-treat. So I'm gonna take this off. Again, when you're curing hoodies, because of the amount of pre-treat that you're putting on the garment, you wanna make sure you thread your hoodies onto the uh, heat press. 
That way it's gonna make sure you're going to definitely uh, get the fabric to dry. Because what happens if you double it up, some of that moisture can penetrate to the bottom layer and then that creates a problem when you go to print and cure later. So I'm gonna thread this on here. Making sure that I don't, uh, this particular hoodie has a real thick uh, plastic zipper on it. So I wanna make sure I'm not going to catch that in the front. So I wanna pull that forward a little bit, straighten it out. And typically on the parchment paper, you're not gonna be able to reuse them as much as you normally would if you were go to go with uh, t-shirts and things of that nature uh, because there's so much moisture involved. Hey Roy, uh, a question. Can you tell us a little bit more about the makeup of that hoodie? Uh, so we're, we're using just hoods from AWD, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. And that, what's the, um, the cut makeup? Of this that? one? This one is uh, 80 Algoron or Algodon and 20 Poly, okay? And so that is another term for cotton, obviously. Yep. And uh, so there is no cotton face on this one. It's an 80-20. Perfect, thanks. Then we also have another hoodie that we'll be printing on. Uh, and this one is also an 80-20, and it doesn't have a zipper. So typically I'm gonna run a longer uh, cure time on this as well. So um, right now I had it at 90 seconds. I wanna make sure that it is completely dry. Sometimes people take them off and just set them to the side for a little bit before they uh, print on them but I definitely wanna make sure that it's completely dry where it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and just flip this over and I'm gonna, there's a couple little wet spots here, so I'm gonna hit it again for a little bit here, probably another 30 seconds or so. So it's taking a little longer because we got a thicker- uh, Yeah, and there's more pre-treat on more it. More pre-treat, yep. right. So what I do have though, to get started on mounting, is I do have one already done. Okay, so this one's already been cured. Uh, it's like uh, the baker that pulls the, the pie out of the oven that's already. So this one being that it is a zipper, I'm gonna take the spacer out of the printer. And I'm gonna bring this up. Now at this point, with this particular platen, it's really easy to position in comparison to some of the other ones because it's a little shorter in length. Really, there's no need to have the extra length because of the pocket area. So it also gives you the ability to run more sizes. Some of these platens that have the risers and things of that nature we've done a video on, they're on the bigger platens. So basically what you have is you have with the risers uh, and everything, it takes up a lot of room and you're really limited to some of the hoodie sizes that you can actually fit on there unless you're gonna really stretch them out. So um, you can see how much room I have. Actually almost uh, three and a half inches on either side. And this is only a large on this hoodie. So I'm gonna just straighten it out just like I would a shirt. And then I got the... Okay, while you're doing that, Roy, just a big question here. Are you going to use the frame? Yes. Okay. And then um, somebody asked a question. They didn't hear where we got the hoodies from. So you can go on our website and uh, we sell these hoodies. They are just hoods from All We Do, uh, AWD. And you can see those right on our website. Now the nice thing that. about this frame too, it does have a channel for the zipper, so it helps you kind of line line up the front and the back of the zipper, how you're getting it on there. And then I can go ahead and tuck everything in. On this particular uh, hoodie, 
Uh, it is a little thick, but I have my platen height set at three on the standard without taking out any spacers or anything. So I can go ahead and test that. Sending that in there. No error. Somebody asked the question while it's doing that. Um, is it possible to dry the hoodie too long? I mean, eventually you would scorch it. But yeah. These are pretty thick. And um, I mean, if you go a few seconds longer, you're not going to hurt it. But Yeah, there's a lot of people that will actually go 90 seconds just on a T-shirt. So all I did was do a 90 and then throw it in there for about another 30 after I opened it up, letting some of that uh, steam out, whatever vapors that are in there out, and then uh, putting the, uh, the top back down on it and going for another 30. So that's actually not that long. The other thing to keep in mind is if you're doing any type of blends uh, for shirts that you're curing, sometimes you're going to go with a lower temperature and some of that requires you to have to pre or uh, cure more than one time. So, uh, and typically, let's say if I did a tri blend, certain manufacturers where I'm getting that dye migration back into my white base, I definitely want to go at a lower temperature. And then it's up to you as the, uh, the customer of ours, but actually the provider of the product to test it, do some wash tests and make sure that that product is going to work for you and your customers. Otherwise, you need to try something else that is going to work. So basically, this is all set to go. And I'm going to go on the computer and share my screen to show you how to set up the platen uh, inside Garment Creator. So I already have this logo up and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you how to go bring in the platen that we are providing. So I'm going to go to import under file, background. It's a little bit different place for uh, Macs versus PCs, but it's still the import tab. So I'm going to bring this in. You can see that my standard platen of 1416 is not going to work for me. So I need to go to the larger size. And now I can go ahead and position this. Um, I've allowed on my hoodie up here um, about an inch forward. So I'm only going an inch down onto that platen. And again, this platen dimension here uh, might look a little off, but you can print out to pretty much the edge here without running off the plat, and we specially set that up for that, okay? So I'm just gonna kind of center this right at the one inch mark down on the lead edge of the platen. Then going to my settings. I just wanted to point something out. You said that you have this specially set up for the platen for everybody who purchases this platen. You then email them this this setup in for garment creator. Yes, our office has that. It's in a zip file along with a PDF to go through the settings if you need to review that again. Plus, you can refer back to this video as well. Yeah, and that's true for all of the plans you get from us. We have the garment creator uh, template mm -hmm. for you to set up your. We are basically, I think, the only dealer that does this, if not one of very few in the world. Uh, these these templates are very difficult to set up. It's not something where you can just size it just because it says a 1620 platen. Uh, there's a lot of trial and error in setting these up because they're not the size that you would think they would be to fit. So uh, and I think that's why a lot of other dealers abandon trying to do this for their customers. So at this point, uh, my settings on this one, uh, because of that uh, hoodie and the, uh, the uh, mixture of the fabrics of the 80-20, I could go to a level six. Typically on some, I would do that if I want to really saturate the white because definitely hoodies take more, but I'm charging more for them to compensate for the extra ink cost. But this one I'm doing at level five. 
Uh, and I'm going with a 75% white base on that uh, to kind of even out how that's going to lay out. And I also did some uh, changes down here on my color settings because I've, I've played with this specific logo and it gives it almost a puff paint look uh, messing with the brightness and contrast down here. It gives it almost like a 3D look versus like looking flat onto the uh, uh, hoodie or whatever you're printing on. So I'm just going to go ahead and print that and then go back to the printer and let you guys see that uh, print. And I didn't even put a pause on that uh, because I'm not putting a double base of white, okay? So I'll go ahead and move the camera over here so you can see where we're at. And I also have a bypass for my hood, so I can go ahead and open that up and let you guys see that print. So this is ready to go. We're going in. So you can see that's a nice white base indicating I did pre-treat it properly. You know, Roy, what I love about these uh, live webinars that people get to see is that you know we're not speeding this up mm -hmm. or manipulating this. This is all live. This is what you guys would go through. Um, you can see that you got this all set up in, in one shot in, in the way we're printing. But, um, you know, if you're watching stuff recorded, you don't know if a, a vendor speeding something up, but this is yeah. printing really fast. That's yep. impressive. Printing live, and it's got a sufficient amount of white, as you can see on there, for being a hoodie without going to a level six. That's the other thing to keep in mind when you're dealing with uh, adjusting your white base on levels one through five. It first redistributes the uh, white ink at the lower uh, mounts. So you could actually say, uh, change your setting from normal, which is zero, and go up to 10 or 15% thinking you're adding ink when you're actually not, you're taking ink away. So, uh, so if you wanted to do something like that, you can. What, what would the cost on this print be? Oh. Could you look that I up for us in Garment Creator? Look that up while that's printing. Well, that's just, that's done. Let me go ahead and I'll share my screen so there's uh, no smoke and mirrors there. One twenty-seven. A dollar twenty-seven right cents. Here on the right. So very, very inexpensive print. A great print. And we'll go ahead and uh, take a closer look at the actual print itself. And again, as I mentioned, if you look, kind of look at it, it gives it that little appearance of puff paint. I think I have, might have a little too much light on it, so I'll get down a little closer. That's amazing. You know, $1.27 in ink, um, you're selling that hoodie uh, for about 30 40 bucks if that's going to uh, somebody who's then going to turn around and sell it for another ten or fifteen dollar profit right yep so as you can see there looks pretty good and if you if the actual video doesn't even give it justice in fact at some point i think jay on the video that we put up on youtube will get a, a photo photograph of it so let me go ahead and uh, get this camera back So we have a question. Um, can you change your settings to put more white down where the writing is white, but 
not add more underbase to the gray area. This is a neat feature of the F2100 that you can do that, right? Yeah, that would be under actually level five does that. Okay, it does a highlight white feature. So anywhere that there is a uh, saturation of white, it's gonna hit that again as it's printing the other colors. Now this one being kind of a grayish look, gives it a different outcome. But it definitely added a little bit more white there where the uh, top of the equipment and the top of zone because uh, it is actually a lot more white in that area. And then there's that little droplet. There's some areas there that are uh, totally white. Okay. So at this point, we'll go ahead and cure this. This one's ready to go. And I can go through a thought process of taking another garment and what I would do with it to make sure on this specific hoodie how to get a good print. The other thing is Jeff mentioned uh, that Equipment Zone does sell these hoodies. And the reason why we sell the hoodies is because hoodies that print well are hard to come by in the industry. And we've had a lot of customers complaining that we say that these will print on hoodies and they're having problems finding products that work. So you can go to our site and order them. There are a couple manufacturers out there that are are really working towards getting better products out there, but we do a, a really good job with this particular product. All right, so I can go ahead and I'm gonna go with this gray hoodie here that's already been pre-treated and go with this one first, and then I have that other zipper over there. So this one, I'm gonna put my adapter back in, and again, thread it. And it is the same thickness, so I don't need to change anything on my platen. Just gonna position and center that, and uh, get my ring here. And get that on there. So now I'm looking at a completely flat surface here uh, in comparison to the other one. And again, I have probably about an inch and a half gap from the edge here, keeping that in mind how far I wanna position it down on the hoodie when I put that in. <coughs> so I will go over to ensure my screen again. And I will just bring a, one in uh, from scratch here and kind of show you the process of doing that since we already had the platen. So I'm just going to open a file and go to While you're doing that, Roy, I just wanted to point something out about the platen. I noticed as you're putting that that hoop around it, you call it a ring, I call it a hoop. Yeah. People have different names for it, but that unique rubber design around the edges helps hold that taut yeah. without stretching it. Exactly. Which is uh, another really cool feature about yeah. these platens. It's really easy to use because some of the other ones um, that, that are out there, like these typical frames here, when you put these on, you almost have to kind of pull the fabric around to, to make it lay down flat otherwise you got to build up around the edges here which creates an issue and what happens is, is people will overstretch it and distort the fabric oh hold on one sec let me uh stop you, this you were share. showing everybody but i was you were showing on screen. and i wasn't on the camera so sorry about that but anyway what i was saying is is that when you use a frame like this what happens is is you have a little buildup of fabric around the outer perimeter and you end up trying to pulling it, pull it down to kind of get those areas. And what happens is you distort the fabric a little bit. I always tell people when you use a frame like this, you want to pull it down, then pull this up and let the fabric relax, okay? This one pulls just enough to flatten it all out without having to do anything. Uh, and what happens is, and a lot of people don't realize this, in Garment Creator, you have your white, reduced white area. It's defaulted to two, 
a lot of times people will start using that because they're distorting the fabric and they'll get white lines on certain edges. If you're not getting a white line all the way around, you don't have an issue with your white base. It's because the fabric has been stretched. And what happens is when it gets wet with ink, it will relax and stretch even more. So keep that in mind if you have areas that are having white lines just on half or one side or in one particular part of the image, that is uh, clearly due to stretching the fabric too much and distorting it. So let me go back to Garment Creator real quick. So I have this image here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna size it. It's uh, six and five inches. I'm gonna go 12 inches since it's a narrow image. I'm gonna go ahead and position that where I want it to be. And then I'm gonna go back to my setting. Now on this, I'm gonna do five as well. And I wanna put a lot of uh, white down as well as my base. And as far as these settings here, I can also look at some of the ones that uh, Epson provides. If you look at the density and the changes here on this, um, this is actually something that makes it pretty vibrant and dark. Okay, so then uh, I can go ahead and look at what these settings are. If I wanted to tone that down, I can also do something like that and uh, even tone that down a little bit more on this end. And that gives me something that's gonna pop a little bit more on the shirt. Not that you have to use these settings, I'm just showing you that they're there uh, if you wanted to add a little extra, especially when it comes to vibrant colors like this. So I'm gonna just go ahead and hit print on this one as well. While that's sending over or I'm getting ready to print, I'm going to actually give you the cost on this one before I go ahead and uh, leave the screen. Did well, you have a question? Yeah, while you're doing that, somebody asked a question about does ink ever come up around the uh, the zipper area? I've never seen or heard of that. No. Okay. That's not that's not a thing. If wait, if it does gum up, you know what that's caused by is too much white. A lot of people compensate for not enough free treat by piling the white ink onto the fabric. And a lot of times on t-shirts, they'll get the fab, the white ink will penetrate through the fabric. And that's why a lot of people will thread their shirts is because the pre-treat not only bonds the ink to the fabric layer, it also keeps the ink above and on top of the fabric layer. So if you have white penetration, you're not pre-treating properly. Keep that in mind. And then if you compensate with too much white ink, you're spending a lot of money unnecessarily. Somebody asked a question, how do you handle that strange flat shininess on the seams by the zipper? Customers would notice that on the finished product. Is there a way to avoid that look? Well, that's a tough one because I think it has to do with the shirt or the, the product and the, the, the blend uh, that you're using because I don't see that really happening on a shiny aspect with ours. Uh, especially after you wash it once, it might look shiny at first because it's totally flat in that area. But after you wash it, that zipper area that got pressed really good is going to puff back up. If, if somebody noticed it in this so video. So this one's 47 cents, by the way, not to interrupt Jen. <laughs> yeah, 47 cents. That's crazy uh, inexpensive. I, I think if you notice something shiny in our webcast here, also note that we have lights set up on the perimeter of the camera area and above. So there might be some extra reflection, but um, I think after one wash that you wouldn't notice anything like that. No, I don't see anything shiny on this at all. Where the zipper is, that's completely lighting if I turn it sideways there. There's nothing shiny in this area. As far as it looking flat in comparison to down here where it's, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get the light here. Can't really see it, but you see how it kind of puffs up down below where I pressed it, uh, the zipper area compared to up here, it's really flat. 
um, that's going to puff back up after you actually wash the garment. Um, we got a, a question from somebody, and, and maybe this is an offline call for them, but they said um, that they're doing hoodies for the first time today. Mm -hmm. And their customer brought in some hoodies that are all different brands. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when that happens, you kind of want to control the client a little bit on yeah. what you can and cannot do yeah. and what you're willing to do. And if you're getting brands all over the place, mm -hmm. that's going to be a struggle, right? Mm -hmm. Well, to be honest with you, and I think that's what Equipment Zone does is be honest with our customers is I wouldn't recommend anybody take anything from a customer. Usually it's a sell sellout of uh, discontinued products. And what happens is, is if you end up having an issue with it because it doesn't print well, another reason why we're carrying hoodies is because a lot of them don't work. And uh, what it is is the chemical residuals that are in the fabrics that actually uh, repel the pretreat and repel the ink. So if you have something, let's say Scotch Guard effect, so to speak, uh, when I want to keep uh, items off my, uh, say, furniture and whatever, you had this spray that you could spray on there to create a barrier. Some of the chemicals used in the dyeing process actually do that. Uh, if you've ever taken a shirt that's brand new and stick it in a bucket of water, and it actually looks like uh, one of those shop rags that have oil on it, um, that actually is the same thing. So if they're bringing you something that's not going to work, you're wasting your time, your money, and your reputation uh, for that customer. So I think people just need to you know, test products when it comes to doing things like this and only stay with things that work because you're going to charge for them as well. So I'm going to go ahead and start this one, send that in there, and give you the ability to watch this one print as well. While that's printing, Roy, I have another question from one of my favorite clients and webinar groupies, Tawny. Hi, Tawny. Good to see you're here. She asked this question, and uh, I have no idea the answer, so I'm throwing it out there. It's a curveball for you. Why does the adapter, I guess the middle piece, yeah. have two holes in it? Why does the adapter have two holes in it? It makes it easier to grab it out of there. Boom. Good answer. Yeah, and there then it's go, got Tony. two pins underneath that go into a slot to hold it into place. All right. And when you buy it, it comes from us, and it's taped down so it doesn't fall out in shipping. Man, we think of everything. That's right. Hey, guys, this is Jay jumping in. We did think of everything except for one thing, and our uh -oh. fearless leader, Harry Oster, has asked us to take a double check of that hoop, the ring, and make sure that the screw heads are facing down so that there is never a possibility of them interfering with the print head. Okay. Which I completely understand that, but they are lower than the level of the platen as well. But we can keep that in mind. I thought it was ambidextrous myself because it's lower than the surface level of here anyway. But I guess if you didn't shove it down all the way, it could pose a problem. So let's go ahead here and uh, take a look at the end result on this one. Again, we have a lot of extra lighting in here. Let me uh, dim that for you for a second. Now you can see on that, I'm truly getting a good coverage of white. As you can see, the white lay down on there. I was uh, getting a nice coverage. The other thing to keep in mind too, when it comes to hoodies, uh, they are a little bit more porous. So images are going to look a little bit different than a high quality uh, t-shirt. So that's the one thing I would wanna stress with customers. But nice color on that. And go ahead and cure that one. And again, this one doesn't have a 
And on my curing sheets, I'm actually using them more than once, by the way. Just uh, pre-treat ones, depending on how they went. If they get wrinkled, I don't want any of those wrinkles to offset into the garment itself. So uh, keeping that in mind. Yep. All right. All right, Roy. Good job. Are there um, any other questions? I guess uh, I you think we covered them all. There? Yeah. Okay. Um, also, uh, just a reminder. Um, fix that camera a little bit. We uh, we help everybody. So if you have questions that you think of after this webinar, uh -huh. feel free to call in or email support at equipmentzone.com. Roy or one of our other awesome techs would be happy to help you out. Also. Uh, we have a special for you. For everybody who's attending and paying attention to this, we have a special 10% off on all the hoods on our website. You have to call in to use this special and give the promo code SHOW2020. SHOW2020. Did I get that right, Jay? I did. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Expires at the end of the month. Uh -huh. um, and I have one more announcement. We are doing a random drawing. Okay. Have we ever done that? I don't no, think we've ever done never, that, Roy. Never. All right. For everybody who attended, you had to have attended live. We are going to do a random drawing for a $500 gift certificate on future purchases from AWD, right? It's from both of us. So we'll do the random drawing. We'll get in contact with you and, and get that to you. All right, that looks amazing. So you guys can sell that, right? Absolutely. Yep. All right. That's huge profit. Easy to use. All right, well, I'm Jeff Morgenthaler. Roy Huseman. It's been great doing another webinar with you. Look forward to talking to you on the phones. All Have right, a great thank day. you. Have a great day.